Our, our next speaker, uh, possibly needs an introduction, is the Vice Chancellor of the University of York, uh, Charlie Jeffery. Um, we're very grateful he's uh, agreed to take part in our celebrations uh, to celebrate the, the department uh, from a university perspective. Um, arguably, he doesn't need an introduction, but I'll say a little thing, which is uh, Charlie hasn't been very long at the university. He joined in 2019, correct? Uh, which, of course, uh, I think he had a vision uh, which I think has resonated very much across the university of, of going back to what the university was all about as a university for the public good. Uh, and he set out with great verve and momentum uh, to, to make that vision become a, a reality uh, when COVID hit about six months later, making this probably the most difficult period for anybody to start a new job, uh, let alone uh, a, you know, running a university. Um, nonetheless, I think you, you have managed to, to bring that public good through how you handled and how we as an institution handled uh, COVID and also how we're handling coming out of it. Uh, so I'm very pleased that Charlie's able to be here today. Uh, and so I'll hand over to you uh, for your thoughts. Um, thank, thank you very much, uh, Paul. It, it's a real pleasure and, and privilege to be able to help celebrate the 50th anniversary of computer science at the University of York. Uh, I was here for a bit yesterday and I've been around for most of this afternoon and, and it is such a lively and happy uh, occasion. It really is wonderful to see given that we've not been able to be in the same room as each other uh, for a long time. Um, so uh, thanks for having me. In 1972, 50 years ago, uh, computer science was one of the first additions to the founding departments of a university which had opened its doors nine years earlier in 1963. Heavily influenced by the Roundtree <coughs> tradition in York of, of advocacy for social justice, the university's founders charged the new university with the task of carrying out studies which contribute to the amelioration of human life and conditions. It's a wonderful phrase. Um, and those founders could not have imagined how fundamental computer science has become to that task of ameliorating human life and conditions. Uh, and as we look back 50 years, what strikes me is how fully computer scientists understood back then the future potential of their subject. So computer scientists, including those at York, even back then were thinking about what would become the internet. They were thinking about, they were theorizing artificial uh, intelligence. They were, they were imagining what robots could do uh, in the future, even though the infrastructure and the computing power wouldn't be in place to realise uh, such ideas for, for many uh, years. Um, computer science was generally ahead of its time. So that time, let's put it all in perspective by reminding ourselves what was going on in 1972. There's, there's one or two of you here who will remember that. There's, there's a few who won't, so apologies. Uh, and to be honest, it was a pretty bleak year. Let me run through some of the headlines. It, it saw Bloody Sunday in Northern Ireland and the start of what became known as the Troubles. We had a national miners' strike which saw a state of emergency declared in the UK. Idi Amin expelled Uganda's South Asian community. There was the assassination of Israeli athletes at the Munich Olympics. The Watergate affair broke in the USA. And perhaps worst of all, the Christmas number one <laughs> was long-haired lover from Liverpool <laughs> by little Jimmy Osmond. <laughs> so a, a pretty bleak year, as I said. <laughs> but not for computer science, and not just because the department was established uh, here in York. Um, all sorts of milestones, all sorts of interesting things that year. 1972 was the year Cray was founded um, and drove the way into supercomputing. 
1972 saw the launch of the first home video console that could be connected to a television. And I'm sure Paul, who did this fantastic inaugural last night on human-computer interaction focused on games, will know what it was called. No. <laughs> the, Ma the Magnavox Odyssey. <laughs> ah. <laughs> but my next point is about Atari, which released the first commercially successful video game. Paul? Pong. Pong. Indeed, indeed. Uh, Hewlett Packard released the first handheld scientific calculator, the HP 35, um, which cost $395. <laughs> um, got a bit cheaper since. Uh, and the first international conference on computer communications was held in Washington, D.C., and saw the first public presentation of ARPANET, um, pretty much the predecessor of, of the internet. So, not a bad year to launch a computer science department. I'm not entirely sure, though, that we knew quite where to put it. Um, I had the great pleasure last week to, to give a 40-year long service award to Pete Cooper. Oh, Pete, there you are. I've been looking for you. Um, senior technical manager in, in, the, in the department, who recounted what, what sounded like a rather haphazard series of moves of the department from one building to another. Uh, and, and Pete told us about the occasion when the department moved from what's now the Fairhurst wing uh, of the library to, I think, what we now know as the old environment building across the bridge, or it may be somewhere, somewhere across the bridge. Yeah. Uh, and Pete was telling us how, um, ha how for that move, the then showpiece computer, I've forgotten which one it was, Pete. Okay. Um, it was a great big thing. <laughs> yeah, huge. Yeah. Um, and it had to be um, pushed about on a trolley. Uh, and, and those of you who know the, the architecture of the university will know that there is a ramp uh, which comes down from the library bridge to the ground floor and it's quite <laughs> steep uh, and, and um, you nearly lost control <laughs> of it with an image of the thing rolling down the hill into the lake, um, kind of Laurel and Hardy type scene, but just, just averted. Um, uh, I, I suspect we, we handled the move of the department to its current location rather differently. 2010, was it the, the move? Yeah. Um, and uh, as, a, as a core part of the whole campus east development, and it's probably the first properly conceived purpose built accommodation that the department had had. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, it's, it's, a, it's a great. Okay, well, fair enough. It's, it's, it's a great setting. Um, now, across those decades, there have been some uh, extraordinary landmarks. Alan pointed to uh, <coughs> one or two of them. Um, 1996, the, the Queen's Anniversary Prize. These are, these are big things. Yeah, the university is one of few in its time, but they're pretty uh, rare. And let me read from the citation, which uh, I think says an, an awful lot. Uh, coupling high-quality teaching to the practical research and training needs of industry and commerce at international level has resulted in worldwide recognition. Uh, worldwide recognition, 24 years in, not bad. It, the department, has achieved the highest possible ratings in both research and teaching assessment exercises and receives the highest research income from British industry of any UK computer science department. Its results in a very wide area of computer applications have established a deserved world-class reputation. Absolutely fantastic. Um, moving ahead a few years, uh, John McDermott um, was elected to the fellowship of the Royal Academy of Engineering. Uh, with Alan Burns, uh, Jim Woodcock and Edwin Hancock following suit in later years, so outstanding personal distinctions of, uh, of colleagues in the department. Uh, in 2009, uh, Helen Petrie, Helen are you here? 
Oh, she, she was here last night, yeah. Um, she won the ACM Social Impact Award, which is given for the application of human-computer interaction research to pressing social need. And, and the pressing social need that she was working on was uh, the accessibility of mobile and web technologies to older and disabled uh, people. Uh, 2011, the Advanced Computing Architectures Group won the Times Higher Education Award for Outstanding Engineering Team uh, of the Year. And again, those Times Higher Awards are a, you know, um, one of the highlights of the higher education uh, calendar. Uh, in the same year, Alan, Alan Burns was elected Fellow of the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineering and followed by Edwin Hancock uh, later. 2014, the department was in the UK top 10 in the first research excellence framework, the first research assessment exercise which enabled you to construct a clear ranking of, uh, of departments. Uh, in 2016, the Lloyds Register Foundation agreed to fund the Assuring Autonomy International programme, uh, which uh, recognised the brilliant work led by John McDermott and others on the safe, assured and regulated introduction and operation of robotics and autonomous systems. And that, in turn, became a platform for the Institute for Safe Autonomy, uh, which is, I'm, I'm sure many of you have had the chance to go and have a poke around in it. It's a, it's a magnificent new research facility funded by the Lloyd's Register Foundation, public funding through the UK Research Partnerships Investment Fund, uh, along with industry partners and uh, private donors. It opened its doors a few weeks ago and it's going to be such a brilliant hub for the connection of computer science, industry uh, and policy. Uh, and also a few weeks ago, uh, we learned that the department is again in the top 10 in the latest research excellence framework. And it is really hard to stay in the top 10. You know? Other people want to get you out of it. <laughs> uh, it's really hard to stay in it. Um, and what about that as a, as, a, as a list of achievements? I think it really is quite extraordinary. Uh, and what strikes me in it uh, is a commitment to the highest levels of research quality with a commitment to the practical applications of that research and with a concern for how computer science and its applications can have positive social benefit. Or, to put it another way, it's about studies that contribute the amelioration of human life uh, and conditions. And we see that also in a powerful commitment to uh, student education. Uh, I was talking with, with, with Ian Bates earlier about outreach to schools and you know, what, what, I wasn't here but I heard what it was like with the schools, the 200 and odd school children from around York who were visiting to, to get some demonstrations of computer science in practice, have a look at the exhibits outside. Uh, noisy and joyful, I think, was probably, uh, probably a description of it. But, you know, absolutely fantastic, making sure that the next generation picks up the, the interest and the fascination which you know, Ian, from the outset, has, has shown that this department uh, has. Uh, and then, you know, the department has quite a lot of students. Ian was also telling me that earlier and, uh, and suggesting that um, I needed to spend some more money <laughs> on it. On it. Um, but there is, there is a, for obvious reasons, there is a huge demand for really good computer science education at undergraduate and postgraduate uh, levels. And those graphs that you showed Ian, they're, they're really quite dramatic uh, in, in showing how much that has changed in, in recent years. Um, the department was one of the pioneers uh, in the university in offering online-only masters. So opening up the opportunity for computer science education uh, for those who uh, might not be able to stay, study here uh, in person. And what strikes me about that is um, that's opened up an international reach in, in a way that might not otherwise have happened. 
but it's also opened up possibilities for people in their careers in and around this city um, to, to upgrade their skills so that they can take on new roles in their current employment or find uh, further employment. Um, again, really, really important. CPD programmes, um, very highly regarded programme in safety critical systems. Doctoral training, um, we, we heard a lot um, about um, the importance of PhD students um, from both Ian and uh, from, from Alan. Uh, and uh, we've been really successful in winning um, the funding to run kind of large PhD programmes which really help the students as part of a cohort to drive on science. Uh, safe, ethical and secure computing is one. Recent one, intelligent games and game intelligence, which I think is based in this building, um, or, uh, is, is another. Uh, and then there's a powerful record of interdisciplinary collaboration. Computer scientists um, working with other academic disciplines. And through that, opening up new ideas, new applications, new projects uh, around digital creativity, an extraordinary strength of this university in that field of, of safe uh, autonomy where computer science and social science subjects combine. Uh, in quantum communications, in robotics, all of those things showing how integral computer science is to more and more fields of study and through that to more and more fields of contemporary society. And finally, I'll recall again something that, that Alan mentioned, the, the engagement with industry recognised in that 1996 Queen's Anniversary Prize and continuing in industry collaborations, spin-outs, um, the one just down the road. £283 million pound turnover, I, I noticed, so it's pretty, pretty chunky. Uh, and a year in industry programmes for, for undergraduates, which is you know, a real boon for the companies who get brilliant undergraduates working for them and a real boon for our undergraduates in developing their perspectives for their um, post-graduation careers. Now, doing all of that has required an extraordinary <coughs> team effort. Uh, and that's, of course, about our academics, those who devise the teaching, who do the research, who supervise PhD students, they're discovering new knowledge uh, and they're sharing it through their students in a way that diffuses that new knowledge through, uh, through our society. But much as I appreciate the brilliant academics we have, I think we should note that they couldn't do what they do as well as they do it without the professional services staff that support them. Um, and there's a, there's a really, I think, powerful collective tradition in this department, running student services, supporting research, providing technical uh, support to both teaching and uh, research. Now, those colleagues are in many ways the linchpins of the department. Uh, they can sometimes be a little bit unsung so I think now, 50 years on, is a good moment to sing, to sing their praises. So uh, hats off to the professional services staff. Thank you. The department also has uh, brilliant and generous uh, supporters among its alumni uh, and and other friends and supporters and it was a great pleasure that Phil Venables was here I'm not sure if he still is um, can't spot him uh, um, a graduate of the class of 1989 uh, a supporter of the Venables scholarships in uh, robotics uh, and as we heard earlier he's had a quite extraordinary uh, career uh, now um, as, a, as a VP uh, in Google and an advisor to the US president. Um, no, it's not bad, it's not bad. Uh, m many thanks to, to Phil in his absence uh, and all of those others who have supported uh, the department through uh, the donation of, of their money and indeed of, of, of their time. Uh, and the department has had a, a succession of outstanding heads uh, from, from 
the founding head, Ian, uh, who we heard from earlier, through to Paul today, and, and I've met a few others in the course of this afternoon, Keith Manda, Alan Burns, uh, Neil Wardsley, and I don't think I've met any others, but forgive me if I... Oh, John, John, I've forgotten. I've, I've already mentioned John a couple of times, yeah. yeah. Anyway, so um, uh, great, great that uh, so many who have contributed in that way to um, that success story can, can be here. But I want to dwell finally on, on one of those heads, Ian Wand, who, uh, as we heard, sadly passed away a couple of years ago. And we, we heard from Alan uh, about that quite fundamental uh, contribution by Ian uh, to the department and also that much wider contribution to uh, the university as well. He was a really big part of this department's extraordinary story and a really important figure in the history of the university so far. Now many of you may have been wondering what that is. Uh, well, um, to celebrate uh, Ian's impact we are delighted to announce the renaming of the Computer Science Building as the Ian Wand Building. Uh, and there will be a plan. <laughs> and there, there, there will be a plaque on, on the building to, uh, to, to mark this. Uh, and it needs to be unveiled. And I think Helen is going to come up uh, and unveil it. Thank you very much for inviting me here. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to thank you all for this honour on behalf of Ian. It is, of course, he who should be here, not me, and he who should be seeing the long term results of the partner that he helped to plan and which he nurtured in its early years. He was, to be honest, quite a modest man and he was always rather surprised when he got tributes and accolades. I think, however, he would be rather delighted to have a building named after him, <laughs> particularly when it is so close to the wrong cook pub. <laughs> about which he was always slightly bemused, but of course a man with whom he'd served a long and productive working relationship. I think it's rather appropriate that they're next to each other again. I am, however, acutely conscious that what Ian really cared about was students of the future, and he would want his real legacy to be that because of what he did, students who go through this department and through the medical school will have the opportunity to have fuller and more satisfactory lives. So, we thanks to you, with gratitude to God, for a rather special man with whom it was my privilege to spend many years of my life, with pride in his achievements and deep personal sorrow for his loss, I unveil this plaque to the memory of my beloved husband, Professor, the late Professor Lemoyne. Thank you very much.